that up. Chuck Thomas. Another Chuck. Oh. The other Wait, Chuck. The, the, the Chuck. He's the Chuck. The imposter. <laughs> it's the bizarro Chuck. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, but, I, well, yeah maybe. Could You're be. a Superman. Maybe. That's right. Well, shh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I don't want to just sound angry, but why did you make me wait so long? Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, you know, the, the reason is... Uh, it took a, uh, it took at least two years to figure out the screenplay. You know, I really uh, it was a not it was not an easy screenplay to write, uh, and uh, I found the balance of it right at the end of uh, Pan's Labyrinth, and uh, then I turned it in, and it took a long time to get the financing together. You, you know, the movie did exceedingly well on DVD. It did well, okay, on, on box office. So it was not a movie that people were fighting to get. But uh, we had enough respect critically, and people acknowledged the artistic endeavor the first one was. And we kept saying, we can do more. We can be bigger. We can be more uh, beautiful, crazy, and human. But you know, in Hollywood, it's about looking back, when for a filmmaker, it's about looking ahead. Yeah. So it took a long to convince the money people to give us the money and the faith to do the movie, but Universal did. Yeah, the guys downstairs were all, hey, was it like the last one? Like, it's actually kind of like a new mission. I was yeah. telling them, you know, yeah. Yeah. new storyline. And so much has evolved special effects wise since the first one came into play. But I, when I look at Wink, I'm like, holy crap. I yes. mean, that was an amazing, I mean, creature. That, I mean. It is, uh, I think that the movie takes um, a puppetry almost to the edge of where it can be taken. I think we still have room, and I plan to explore that in The Hobbit fully. But uh, what, what we did uh, in very inventive and crazy ways was to supplement puppetry with digital enhancement. So the best makeups, the best puppets have some digital enhancement in the movie. You, uh, th the, the beauty of the DVD is gonna be going to that troll market again for me, because that was so, so I, don't, I don't know how big the set was, but to me, I, I, I couldn't see everything. There were so many creatures, so yes. many things going on. Was that the, like, the, the most that we saw? No. No, actually, I think that you see about 30% of the set. And of that 30%, you see about 5% of the detail. But the idea was to treat it like you would treat a normal set. So monsters that are very expensive to create are seen just briefly, as opposed to every time a creature shows up, giving them a close-up and a close-up of what they're doing. We thought that would give it texturally the feeling of it being more complex, bigger, and more real than, than, than if we detailed it more. Yeah. As a big fan, uh, I'm try when I try to explain to non-fans with the movies, I always tell them that these are creatures and monsters that have personalities. Yes. Is that the secret to what makes this whole thing work? I think so, because each of them represents something in us. I mean, Hellboy is incredibly recognizable for any male. You know, he's a very male essential figure. Abe is uh, almost like an intellect and a spiritual entity of the movie. And Liz, I hope, is recognizable as a, as a female uh, trying to deal with a completely <laughs> irresponsible male partner. So, and Johan is the ra rationale, the, the logic. And so on and so forth. Uh, you recognize these people, and the clue to their hearts is that they are very common. They're very common people doing extraordinary things, you know. But their feelings are recognizable. You know, they are pure, but we recognize ourselves in them. You're amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you very much.